Okay, we've been joined by Wichita State, and uh, we will open with an opening statement from Coach Marshall, and then we will take questions for the coach and the athletes. So, Coach? Okay, uh, first of all, I want to uh, praise um, Archie Miller and the Dayton Flyers and those four seniors for all they've done for that university, for that program, and for college basketball the last four years. So, And it's even been longer than that for Coach Miller, but those dudes are, are warriors. They're tough. Uh, Scoochie Smith was a, incredible tonight with 25 points, but I'm really also proud of these young men to my right, and they made the plays to help us beat a very good team. Okay, if you'll raise your uh, hand, we'll get a microphone to you right here. Bob Lutz, Wichita Eagle, for any of the players. It's been a while since you've been in a hard-fought, close, tough game like this. What was the reaction to it, and how did you uh, overcome that? Zach, we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, you're right. It was, it was definitely uh, something a little brand new to us from how we've seen in the Missouri Valley. But I, I, don't, I don't know. We just, just grinded it out. It was a tough game. Dayton Flyers are an amazing team. I've been watching Scoochie Smith since high school. All these other guys, all these dudes that he's been playing with, they, they had vets on the team that's won a lot of games, you know. And it was, it was really hard fought. No, none of it came easy. Uh, the only thing we were able to do was able to just stop their runs, stop as, as many runs as we could, uh, execute when we needed to, uh, and just maintain the lead for as long as we could. But all in all, it was a big grind. Uh, and I'm, I'm, proud, I'm proud of everybody, like Coach said, for overcoming the def uh, not the deficit, but overcoming just the challenge of being in a close game. Questions, please, right here. Greg, they went uh, eight for 29 in the second half. What adjustments did you make, uh, if any, defensively? Question for Coach. Uh, well, they scored two, two real quick baskets in the second half. Uh, we blew a, a, a switch one time, and they got an easy one. And then uh, Shaq Morris went for a steal and gave him a Pollard a dunk. After that, if they didn't get it in transition, our half-court defense was incredible. But it, once we got, built the lead, they're, I said all along, they're an elite transition team, and they were getting it out and spraying it up and attacking before we could get our defense set. So uh, they're really, really good at it, but I, I doubt they're any better than the two teams that are playing right now. Um, so we'll have, to, we'll have to continue to improve and, and get back and, and set our defense because we're pretty good once we're in a set defense. Right here. Go. Greg, I'll ask you the same question I asked the players. You've always prided your program on toughness, but it's there have been so many lopsided games. Did you have any doubts about how your team would react to a tight game like this? I, I didn't doubt. I was disappointed in the first half. I thought we were playing passively. Um, I thought we were not executing. The three words that I talk about, verve, vigor, and vitality, uh, we didn't have those things. And. Um, we, we played with much, much better uh, energy and passion in the second half. Uh, we were tremendous on the glass. I think we were um, plus 19 on the glass against a, a veteran tough team. And even though we turned the ball over way too many times, uh, we blocked eight shots. I mean, we were at one, at one uh, stretch, I think Marcus McDuffie and, and Rashard Kelly, they were just pinning things against the glass. Uh, a big play was Landry Shamit's block in transition where Kelly sprinted back and got the defensive rebound. That was a huge play. Over here. James Ernest, Grueling Truth. Uh, this is for Coach. How important was the bench tonight? Oh, our bench has been key all year. I mean, we've gone 10 deep all year. Um, and we will continue to go 10 deep. Um, I thought um, even Austin Reeves, who only played four minutes, was probably a season low in a game that he's participated in, um, hit two big free throws. Everybody that played contributed, uh, 10 of those guys, and the six guys that did not play, and I've got two in the stands. We can only have 14 on the bench, so I've got two in the stands. They all contributed to this win as well. And this is a, this is a true definition of a team. These guys love each other. Uh, if, if I don't follow them. I don't have the Instagram, but my daughter does, and she follows them, and she showed me some of the things that they posted going into this game and, and, the, and what it means to them, and it's, it would bring tears to your eyes if you knew them. Right here. 
Richard and Zach, you guys went to a kind of a different lineup the last about the last six minutes with you, you three, Marcus and Rano. Looked like a really good defensive lineup. What, why was that effective over that last stretch of the game? Richard, we'll start with you. Um, uh, it was more so just what we needed at the time. Uh, some length to bother their guards. And Rano, uh, he's a mobile uh, five man, so he's able to hedge and give back. And they was kind of eating us up at first with that in the first half. So we just had to uh, dig deep and get some stops. So that was the, uh, the matchup and the lineups coach went with, and uh, they followed through. Zach? Uh, I got to agree with Rashard. You know, uh, they had, you know, guys like Pollard and a lot of, a lot of big guys that can move really well. You know, and when Shaq got in foul trouble, uh, Ronald really stepped up, you know, and made some, made some big plays, which people, people wouldn't think of big plays. But we go back and watch film, we're like, yeah, Rish uh, Ronald, you was in the right position, Richard. You was in the right p position. You made a winning play, you know. And, you know, we just do what we do all year. Uh, just try and guard our man the best we can, you know, be in the right positions where we need to be. And, you know, uh, coach made the right decision, like he like usually does, and putting the right lineup in. Right here. <clears throat> uh, Landry, it was really hard for the, for the guards in the first half tonight to find openings, to get Connor open, to get, to get you open. What were there adjustments made that helped free <coughs> that up a little bit in the second half? Question for Landry. Uh, we, we tweaked a few things in the second half. Uh, first half. We, as guards, just me personally, I just didn't play very well. Uh, didn't play good enough to have us a lead or whatever. And uh, we tweaked a few things in the locker room as far as offense goes to, you know, try to get Connor some open looks and, um, you know, really kind of manipulate their defense a little bit. So we, we just tweaked a couple of things. Right here. Yep. Hey, Zach, shooting like this tonight, does that come into the category of all the extra time you spend after practice really paying off on it in a situation like this? For Zach? Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> every day, just, well, just about every day, I try to get in as many shots as I can after practice. You know, I got to thank Matt and Grant, Tommy, all the managers that really stayed in with me. Uh, all those extra hours and me just staying behind and getting up as, as many as I can, different types of shots. And one thing, one thing I, I wasn't, I haven't really been good in this year was shooting while moving. You know, I, it's, been, it's been kind of tough for me to, to shoot, you know, off, off of screens or anything or instead of just shooting stationary shots. So, yeah, I say it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Hard work pays off, just like Ron said, you know, so. Right here. For Zach and Landry, it's, it's hypothetical at this point because they're playing <coughs> right now, but if you get a chance to face Kentucky, what, what would it take to, to beat a team like that? Zach? Uh, repeat the question, please. <laughs> Sorry. It's about potentially playing Kentucky. Basically, yeah, playing Kentucky. What would it take to beat a team like Kentucky if they advanced and you end up facing them Sunday? Uh, it's it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot. Uh, there's, uh, well, we, we've definitely seen them play. You know, everybody's seen Kentucky play this year. Uh, we, you know that they have guys that could take you off the bounce at any time. You know, uh, they're really good. They're, they're really good defensively, and they get out in transition. So we're really going to have to get back. Uh, it's going it's to be a grind. It really is. Because, you know, they're, they're not going to back down just like we're not. And it's going to be a classic game. You know, we're all excited for it, and we can't wait. We're going to go right over here. And then we'll come back. Yeah, just to follow up on Myron's question for Zach and Coach, uh, we talked about this a little yesterday, Coach. You know, Kentucky's obviously known for producing a lot of NBA guys, but your Final Four team from a few years ago produced three NBA players. What's kind of the difference in philosophy, I guess, between you and Cal and how you're getting these guys who get to the NBA? And, and maybe Zach or one of the players could answer that as well. Coach, we'll start with you. Well, uh, the, the, the guys that they bring in are a little more ready-made for the NBA with the size, athleticism, and he gets them better and he gets them prepared for the NBA and as, as well as anyone. Ours take a little more time in the incubator and, and developing and 
working with them and developing their bodies and their skill set and uh, teaching them to play angry. And uh, the bottom line is uh, it doesn't matter how you get there. Uh, uh, we've, as you mentioned, we've had four or five in the last couple of years, and we've got a couple more on this roster. And, and you, don't, you may not know it yet, but you will in a couple of years because we've got no seniors. Our, our, our guys don't normally do it in one year or two years. They do it in four years. Zach, do you want to address that? Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, you know, Kentucky produces NBA players. Everybody knows that. Uh, Wichita State guys like Ron, Fred, Clee. Uh, like I said before, we're shooting the 300. Uh, it came just from hard work, you know, great coaching, you know. Uh, I see those guys when I was a freshman and even last year, I saw Ron Fred constantly working, Takel constantly working in the gym before me at 6 in the morning, you know. And, like, you, you would think that all these guys are really talented, and a lot of people are, but it's really just a grind. They be, they be in the gym just as much as we are. You know, and they're getting better just like we are. So uh, I would say just with that, you know. So time for our last question. Greg, that lineup that kind of closed the game with these three and Ron Owen and, and Marcus, how did you hit upon that, and, and why do you think that was as effective as it was? Uh, I liked that lineup defensively. Uh, once we got the six to eight point lead, um, they, um, they were going to attack us pretty hard off the bounce, and, and Zach was doing a great job. Uh, Marcus was doing a great job. Richard was doing a great job. And Rano, and then Landry, obviously. We could switch a lot of their ball screen action with that lineup with a similar size. And um, I just, uh, I, I, I thought also that they, that was a good rebounding team. Uh, I didn't know they were going to block as many shots, but they did. Uh, and I would like to finish by saying that, uh, once again, th I think Dayton deserved a better draw in this tournament. I'll finish with that.